we've really kind of already addressed uh, the current state of short track racing, which was one of our topics for today. But I guess we can touch on it just a little bit more in basically where do we go from here? You know, we're, we're at a situation where I feel like we're on a good trajectory. At least it's felt that way this year. But then we have, you know, something devastating or something as devastating as losing Greenville Pickens Speedway or on the horizon of losing Greenville and what that may do for our local industry, short track racing industry. So it really makes you think, you know, are we really on the trajectory that we think we are or where do we really go from here? Well, I mean, honestly, it, we're starting, we're no longer, you know, hovering at a level line. Our line is starting to gradually go back up. Um, a lot a lot of that is due to Dale coming in and, you know, you know, putting his full brunt behind getting the people involved in, you know, our short track racing, you know, the local short track racing, not just, you know, the cup cars going to Martinsville or Richmond, to, to the true short track racing you know that that made nascar the sport that it is um we see we see tracks trying to start you know different things to keep drivers coming in you know like hickory with their points this year for the late model um kevin even has a couple ideas for next year that sound exciting um you know the, these bigger races that we're seeing at florence at southern national um dealing with their new year's bash you know you know those, those types of things are not only gaining momentum, gaining attention, and getting people's eyes on it, but, you know, hopefully getting people in, you know, butts in the seats, and, you know, compared to, let's just say, 2015 to 2022 now at Hickory, I personally feel like there's a lot more butts in the seats this year than I have probably seen in the last five years, so, you know, we're, we're making our way up there, like we discussed, you know, there's little things that always can be changed, prices, you know, you know, driver involvement, all that good stuff, but, you know, we're, we're on the you know, the incline rather than the decline. And I'd much rather be on the incline. I do think our opinion is a little swayed because we were in a good, we had a good experience at Hickory this year. Uh, you're, you're probably Because right. you interview someone from Greenville, they're, they're, they're a different story. obviously the track, you know, is on the brink of getting destroyed. But I'm just saying for a simple standpoint of how their season went, you know, they would probably have quite the contrary or opinion. The opposite, yeah. yeah. So I think, it's really situational. It depends on what track and what experience you have at that track. But overall, I do feel like we are moving in the right direction. We have a lot to still work on. Um, we, I feel like we addressed a lot of it in this podcast. It'll take us a decade to go yeah, over everything. Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot of people you could bring on a show like this and them have valuable information and, and knowledge uh, on the topic. So um, I guess that is a good point. You know, if you're watching uh, these videos on YouTube, we do post clips on YouTube. Uh, if you're only an audio listener and you're interested in watching us run our mouth, you can do so over at uh, the Huffman Racing YouTube channel. I obviously have my personal channel, which is Landon Huffman Racing, where we post all of our vlog videos and race day content. But we do post clips of this podcast over on the Huffman Racing channel as well, if you're interested in that. 